for myself, Dr. Prema Joshi. I am a professor in HOD, Department of Physiology, working in Dr. DPMC Medical College, Nasik. Okay. So uh, today's uh, topic is vestibular apparatus, which is a part of the competency, competency number 10.4. Okay. In this competency, we have already studied about the motor tracts. Okay. We saw the postural reflexes, maintenance of posture. Now today we will be seeing vestibular apparatus. Okay. So the objectives are for this session. At the end of the session, the student will be able to describe the functional anatomy of the vestibular apparatus, explain the mechanism of action of the vestibular receptors, describe the vestibular pathway, enumerate the functions of vestibular apparatus. So initially we will start with the functional anatomy of the vestibular apparatus. So where is the vestibular apparatus located? It is located in the petrous part of the temporal bone. Is it already taught in anatomy? Yes? Okay. So vestibular apparatus is located in the petrous part of the temporal bone. Vestibular apparatus, if you see, the bony part is made up of three semicircular canals. Okay? And vestibule. is the vestibule. So three semicircular canals, one vestibule and a cochlea. This is the bony part of the vestibular apparatus. But actually if you see the vestibular apparatus, it is made up of bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. The bony labyrinth that we saw is the vestibule, the semicircular canals and the cochlea. Okay? This vestibule is made up of utricle and sacrum. Vestibule is made up of utricle and sacrum. There are three semicircular canals, anterior, posterior and lateral. And cochlea. What is cochlea? The receptor organ of hearing. It is the receptor organ of hearing. Now inside this mem uh, bony labyrinth is the membranous labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth is made up of semicircular canals in the bony semicircular canal. The bony vestibule consists of utricle and saccule. The membranous part which is present in the vestibule is called as utricle and saccule. Okay, and then duct of cochlea is present in the cochlea. Did you understand? So if you see the internal anatomy of the vestibular apparatus, the outside is the bony labyrinth. Can you see? Inside the bony labyrinth is the membranous labyrinth. So in the bony semicircular canal is the membranous semicircular canal. In the bony vestibule is the membranous utricle and saccule. And in the bony cochlea is the duct of cochlea. Okay. So vestibular apparatus consists of semicircular canals and vestibule. Did you understand? Now the bony labyrinth consists of a fluid which is called as perilymph. And inside the membranous labyrinth consists of endolymph. The endolymph, the constituent of the endolymph is the same as that of the intracellular fluid. Oh, under here membranous labyrinth ke under. So it has the constituent similar to that of intracellular fluid. And the perilymph has the constituent similar to that of the extracellular fluid. Did you understand this much? So these are, this is the functional anatomy of the vestibular apparatus. Now how are these semicircular canals arranged? The semicircular canals arranged are, as I told you, it is anterior, posterior and lateral. So we will start with the lateral one. The lateral semicircular canal is not exactly horizontal. Lateral semicircular canal is also called as horizontal semicircular canal. Okay? So when you bend down 30 degrees, at that time, the lateral semicircular canal or the horizontal semicircular canal becomes exactly horizontal. Did you understand? When you are upright, it is not exactly horizontal. Okay? The lateral or the horizontal semicircular canals becomes horizontal when you bend down 30 degrees. Okay? The anterior semicircular canal is directed forwards and outwards. It is like this forwards and outwards and it is at an angle of 45 degrees to the sagittal plane. It is at an angle of 45 degrees to the sagittal plane. The posterior is like this. Okay. The posterior semicircular canal is backwards and outwards. 45 degrees to the sagittal plane in the opposite direction. So left ka 
anterior or right calf posterior will be in same plane. Did you understand? Whereas right calf anterior and left calf posterior will be in same plane. And all these are 90 degrees to each other. Okay. So when you bend down 30 degrees, what will happen? The horizontal will be exactly horizontal, anterior will be 45 degrees, posterior will be 45 degrees. Did you understand this? Okay. So what is the main function of the semicircular canal? The main function of the semicircular canal is to detect angular acceleration. It responds to angular acceleration and tries to maintain the posture and equilibrium during angular acceleration. Did you understand? Okay. This is when the subject has bent down 30 degrees. All the angles are at 90 degrees to each other. Okay. Now how do they work? The semicircular canals, you can see they have a dilated end which is called as the ampulla. Can you see here? Ampulla. Ampulla of this. Ampulla of this. Okay. So in the ampulla there is an organ or a receptor organ which is called as crista ampullaris. In the semicircular canal, every semicircular canal has a dilated end. It is called as ampulla. In the ampulla, there is the organ of receptor which is called as the crista ampullaris. This crista ampullaris is present in the ampulla such that its one end of the cupola is attached or is in close proximity to the ampulla. Okay? But this the ampulla, hai, it opens into the utricle. This ampulla is opening into the utricle. The utricle is connected to the to the saccule. The saccule is then connected to the cochlea. Is it clear? Okay. Now this vestibular canal, if there are three canals, it will be having how many openings? Six. But there are no six openings. There are only five openings. Okay. Through five openings, they will be opening into the utricle. The dilated part of the three semicircular canals, okay, and the horizontal semicircular canal, ka jo narrow part hai, that also opens directly into the utricle. But anterior and posterior semicircular canal, the narrow end, they merge together and then open into the utricle. Did you understand? Therefore, instead of six openings, there are how many openings? Five, five, five openings. So, five openings. Through five openings, the semicircular canal, it opens into the uterus. But this crista ampullaris, is it present in the narrow end? No. It is present only in the dilated end, which is called as the ampulla. Okay. Now, in this ampulla, the receptor is the hair cell. Okay. In this Crista ampullaris, the receptor is the hair cell. There are two types of hair cells. One is flask shaped hair cell and one is cylindrical shaped hair cell. The flask shaped hair cell, it synapses only with afferent nerves. It synapses only with afferent nerves. Whereas the cylindrical hair cell, it synapses with both afferent and efferent. Now this hair cell on the upper end has cuticular plate has a cuticular plate on which there are many cilia. On one hair cell there are minimum 40 to 60 cilia. Did you understand? On one hair cell there are minimum 40 to 60 cilia on these on this cuticular plate. This cilia amongst this cilia there is one cilia which is the tallest and rigid. It is called as kinocilia. It is called as kinocelium. Can you see here? This is the kinocelium. These are the stereocelia. The stereocelia are arranged in an ascending order towards the kinocelium. The stereocelia is attached to the neighboring stereocelia and the final stereocelia is attached to the kinocelium uh, through tiplings. These tiplings are mechanically operated. Means if this is the kinocelium and this is the stereocilia, when the stereocilia bends towards the kinocelium, this tippling will be stretched, right? And when it moves towards, what will happen? The tipplings will be relaxed, okay? Now the other end of the tippling is attached to potassium channels. 
So when the stereocilia bends towards the kinocilia, the tiplings they are stretched. The other end of the tippling is attached to the potassium channels. So what happens? The gates they open and this hair cell is embedded in which fluid? It is inside, no? inside the membranous labyrinth. So it is having endolip which has a constituent similar to intracellular fluid. So there is large amount of potassium in intracellular fluid. So potassium starts coming in. As soon as potassium starts coming in, the hair cell gets depolarized. Why? Because these hair cells are polarized cells. They have a resting membrane potential of minus 60 millivolts. When potassium starts coming in, the resting membrane potential starts going towards the positive direction and gets stimulated. That means depolarization is happening. Now because the depolarization happens, the voltage gated calcium channels they open. Calcium starts coming in, then the vesicles filled with neurotransmitters, they are carried towards the end of the hair cells. There is release of the neurotransmitter by the process of exocytosis and then the neurotransmitter acts on the afferent nerves and the afferent nerve gets stimulated. Now, when is this happening? When the stereocilia is moving towards the kinocilium, depolarization of the cell takes place causing stimulation of the afferent nerves. But if this happens in the opposite direction, if the stereocilia move away from the kinocilium, what will happen? This stretch on the tip link is not there. It will not result into the opening of the positive channel and hence there will be no depolarization. There will be hyperpolarization. So that means the hair, uh, hair cells are stimulated only when the stereocilia moves towards the kinocilia. When it moves in the opposite direction, there is hyperpolarization, there is no stimulation of the afferent nerve. Did you understand? Okay. Now where is this actually present and how is it actually present? These are the three semicircular canals. I told you in the dilated ends only, they have the crista ampullaris. How is the structure of crista ampullaris like this? Crista ampullaris consists of neuroepithelium which has the hair cells. The hair cells embedded in it. Hair cells on the cuticular plane will be having the cilia. Cilia will be arranged such that it will be going in an increased length towards the kinocilia. All the hair cells in one uh, cupola okay, or in one, what you say, crista ampullaris will be always in one direction only. Do you understand? Agar ye hair cell ka, it is like this, the next hair cell will also be having the hair, uh, cilia in increasing direction towards the kinocilia. Did you understand? It will not be like this. Okay? So, all the hair cells are here which are embedded in a gelatinous matter, a jelly-like matter, gelatinous matter which is called as the cupola. It is called as cupola. So, this is the neuroepithelium. Along with it, there are secretory cells which are present with the neuroepithelium. Then, the structure of it I have already told. The hair cells are embedded in a gelatinous matter which is called as the cupola. Now this cupola at the free end, this is not the free end. The free end of the cupola is in close proximity to the ampulla wall. Okay? So you can see here, if this is the lateral semicircular canal, through the dilated end it is opening into the utricle. Where is the crista ampullaris? Here. Okay? And the end of the cupola, the free end of the cupola is in close proximity to the wall of the ampulla. Now this is true for every semicircular canal to the extent that it almost closes the ampulla. It almost closes the ampulla. This is the horizontal canal. It is almost closing the ampulla so that the endolip does not move freely. Did you understand? Cannot move freely. Now here also, this is the anterior semicircular canal. The uh, ampulla is almost closed by the cupola, okay, such that free movement of the endolymph cannot take place. Did you understand? Is it there at the narrow end? No. Okay, so this is the uh, 
clear structure of the crista ampullaris, which is the receptor organ present in the ampulla of the of the semicircular canal. Okay. Now this is the structure of the receptor organ which is present in the utricle and the saccule. The utricle and the saccule together are called as otolith. What do you mean by lith? Stone. Stone. Lith means stone. So this is a structure which is having stones of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate crystals are present in the receptor organ of utricle and saccule and hence they are called as otolith. Okay. So, Otolith organs are neutral and saccule, which is present in the bony vestibule of the vestibular apparatus. The other structure remains the same where there is a neuroepithelium, there it was secreting cells, here there are supporting cells. <coughs> On the upper end there are cilia and one kinocilia. You can see the direction of all the cells is the same. Okay? Then there is the cupola the gelatinous membrane and in that there are calcium carbonate crystals okay and hence they are called as otolith. Was there calcium carbonate crystals in the cupola of the semicircular canals? No, it is present only in the receptor organ of utricle and sacs and this increases the specific gravity of the cupola you know, because it is having the calcium carbonate crystals in comparison to the endolymph fluid. Did you understand? Yes, you will understand it better as we go further. Okay. So, this is the orientation of utricle and saccule. If you see utricle and saccule, utricle, the cilia is in a vertical direction. Okay. And the neuroepithelium is horizontal. It is in the vertical direction and neuroepithelium is horizontal. You can see here, this is the utricle. Neuroepithelium horizontal in the utricle and the cilia is in the upwards direction. Okay. Now suppose you are driving a car and the car is fully accelerated. It is in acceleration. What will happen? Your utricle is like this. Okay. This is your cilia. Utricle neuroepithelium is horizontal, cilia is vertical. Now the car is going in full speed. What will happen? The cupola is having high gravity. So the gravity will pull the cupola back. So it will pull the cilia towards the kinocilia and it will stimulate the stimulate the utricle. Utricle, the neuroepithelium is horizontal, cilia is vertical. So, it will get stimulated in the horizontal plane when you are accelerated or you are deaccelerated. Whenever there is change in velocity or acceleration, that time what will happen? It will be stimulated. Again, when a constant speed is reached, it will not be stimulated. Did you understand? So, why is it happening? Because the cupola is having high specific gravity because of the calcium carbonate crystals as compared to the endolymph. So, endolymph the gravity will pull the cupola back and then endolymph will push it towards the kinocilia and the utricle of both the ears will get stimulated. Did you understand this? Okay. Now next is the macula of the saccule. Okay. Macula of the saccule. In the saccule, the cilia are horizontal. Okay. And the neuroepithelium <coughs> is vertical. Did you understand? Okay. So now suppose you are in a lift. Okay. Suppose you are in a lift and this is your horizontal cilia and this is your epithelium. Now you are going upwards. What will happen when you are going upwards? The acceleration upwards will pull the cupola downwards. It will pull the cilia towards the kinocilia and it will get stimulated. So your ears, the saccule will get stimulated. So whenever there is vertical acceleration, what will get stimulated? Saccule. Whenever there is horizontal acceleration, what will get stimulated? Did you understand? The sensory organ of semicircular canal is crista ampullaris. The sensory organ of utricle and saccule is called as macula. Sensory organ of utricle 
sensory organ of semicircular canal is called as vista sacculis and of utricle and saccule is called as mitral. Okay. So you can see the functioning of the utricle here. As I told you, this is the otoliths, right? The calcium carbonate crystals. This utricle also gets stimulated when you do dorsiflexion or ventroflexion. Okay. Same thing is there. Utricle may how is the cilia? It is vertical, and the neuroepithelium is horizontal. So when you bend downwards, what will happen? It will be pushed away. So suppose it is stimulated. When it will be, when you will be bending in the opposite direction, it will go towards the cilia. It will be stimulated. So either of the things, when dorsiflexion if it is getting stimulated, in ventroflexion it will get inhibited, and the CNS. Will interpret it as dorsiflexion or ventroflexion. Did you understand? Okay. The same is true for horizontal acceleration. Okay. This is the working of the saccule. Saccule is stimulated, as I told you, in vertical acceleration. And when you try to touch your ear to your shoulder, suppose you are trying to touch your ear to the shoulder, what will happen? It will pull the otoliths. In the saccule, how is the saccule? How is the neuroepithelium of the saccule? It is vertical. The cilia are horizontal. So, जैसे ही आप bend हो जाओगे, what will happen? The otoliths will be pulled because of gravity. The movement of the cilia will happen towards the kinocilium, towards the side on which you are bending. The other side will get inhibited. So, the CNS will interpret that the head is being turned to the left side. If you are turning to the right side, what will happen again? The gravity will pull the otoliths, so the cilia will move towards the kinocilium. This ear will, utricle will get stimulated, not utricle. Saccule will get stimulated. This will get inhibited, and the CNS will interpret it as you are bending your head towards the right. Did you understand? So the organ receptor for utricle and saccule is mitral. Okay. 
the impulses sent through right ear and the left ear. The frequency of impulses has been shown. Now suppose you try to move your head okay, towards the right side. The ampulla is here, ampulla of all the three is here and the narrow is behind. You are trying to move your head towards the right. So what happens when you try to move your head towards the right? Your semicircular canal is also moving. But that semicircular canal is having what? Endolymph. Endolymph is not moving. It is having inertia. This is my lateral semicircular canal. Okay. This is my dilated end and this is the narrow end. When I am moving my head, my semicircular canal is also moving. But this canal is having endolymph which is having inertia. Will it move in this direction? No. So it will appear to move as if in the opposite direction. And here is the ampulla. So ampulla mein wo kya karega? It will bang across the cupola. So it will push the cupola. So when it is pushing the cupola, what will happen? It will push the cilia towards the kinocilia. But what is happening in this ear? It was like this. It went like this. Okay. Now, iska bhi semicircular canal is in motion, lateral semicircular canal. Right? Iska bhi endolymph will have inertia. But it is moving in opposite direction. It is moving in opposite direction. So, the endolymph is going away from the cupola. So, this ear, it will get inhibited. What crystal ampullaris of the horizontal semicircular canal will get inhibited. And this will get stimulated. It will be interpreted as the CNS as if it is B. The movement is in horizontal plane and towards the right. Did you understand? Now this is where the movement was initiated. Right? Because there was acceleration. When you get a particular frequency or particular velocity is maintained constant, the movement of the endolymph and the movement of the canals will be the same. So there will be no stimulation. Did you understand? Okay. Once when you stop again, you attain the position and you stop. That is deacceleration. That means canal and the fluid is flowing, flowing in opposite direction. So again there will be stimulation there. But opposite here. Did you understand? Okay. So this was erect position. This was when you started moving, the right ear was stimulated and the left was inhibited. Then the head continues to move. That means a constant speed was attained. So now the movement of the endolymph and the semicircular canal is now in the same direction. Why? Because inertia has been overcome. And therefore there is no stimulation of either of the ear or either of the vestibular canal. Okay. Then when again you stop the head movement, there will be deacceleration. When there will be deacceleration now, again the movement will be in opposite direction as compared to the initial. Did you understand? So when the movement begins and when the movement stops, there will be stimulation and inhibition. But when a constant speed is there, there will be no stimulation sent. Did you understand? Okay. This is true for horizontal semicircular canals, right? The same is true when you are doing a yes type of a movement or a tilting type of movement. Did you understand? And in the same time, even the macula and the utricle will also be stimulated and inhibited depending upon the posture. Okay? So the total impulses that are coming from all the three semicircular canals, utricle and the saccule gives the CNS the information of what is the position of the head in comparison to the body and to the environment. Okay? So what is the vestibular pathway? Vestibular pathway, the afferent nerves that are coming from the vestibular apparatus. Vestibular apparatus is made up of all the three semicircular canals, saccule and utricle. <laughs> The afferents that are coming will be going to the vestibular nuclei. The vestibular nuclei is divided into superior, inferior, lateral and medial part of the vestibular nuclei. It is divided into four. Okay. 
So the afferents are coming from the vestibular apparatus. Apart from this, the vestibular nuclei also gets afferents from the cortex, cerebral cortex and cerebellum. From the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum, whatever afferents the vestibular nuclei is getting are inhibitory. Are inhibitory. Okay. Whereas the afferents that are coming from the vestibular apparatus is to give the information about the position. Did you understand this was about the afferent? What are the efferents? The efferents are vestibulospinal tract, which we have already studied. Vestibulospinal tract starts from the vestibular nuclei goes up to the spinal cord. It is stimulatory to all the anti-gravity muscles and you know, extensors we had studied. It is stimulatory to the extensors. Okay, alpha motor neurons of the extensors. So this is vestibulospinal tract. The next is vestibulo-ocular tract starting from the vestibular nuclei going to the nuclei of 3rd, 4th and 6th cranial nerves. 3rd, 4th and 6th cranial nerves supply the extraocular muscles of the eye. So they play a very important role in vestibulo-ocular reflex. Vestibulo-ocular reflex. So we have seen the inference are vestibulo-spinal tract, vestibulo-ocular tract. Next is vestibulo-reticular tract. Okay. One more is Vestibulo thalamo cortical tract. Vestibulo thalamo cortical. Other tract is starting from the vestibular nucleus going to the reticular activating system of the brain stem and from there going to the cortex. One more is starting from the vestibular nucleus going to the red nucleus and then down. Did you understand? And the last is vestibulo cerebellar tract. Because cerebellum is also concerned with maintenance of posture and equilibrium. Which is the node of the cerebellum which performs this function? The which lobe? Yes, frontal lobe. So the efferents from the vestibular nuclei goes to the flocular nodular lobe. Okay. So these are the efferents. Okay, vestibular spinal tract, vestibular ocular tract, vestibular cerebellar tract, vestibular reticular spinal tract, vestibular nucleo spinal tract, and vestibular thalamo cortical tract. Okay. What are the functions? What are the functions? The main functions are maintenance of equilibrium in linear acceleration as well as angular acceleration. Linear acceleration through what is it maintained? Linear acceleration, utricle and sacral. Angular acceleration, semicircular canals. Okay. So, in dynamic state, it predicts the adjustments that need to be made so that the body does not fall off the balance. Suppose we are moving. Okay. We are, as I have already told you, suppose we are driving a two-wheeler. Okay. Or we are running. Suppose we are running and there is an acute turn. You know, depending upon our speed, the speed is calculated and at up say 5 minute bar or 2 minute bar, what will be the position of the body so that I do not fall will be taken so that I can take the turn smoothly. So who is giving this information? The vestibular apparatus. Vestibular apparatus predicts that within 2 minutes with this speed, I will have to take this turn and to take this turn, I will have to cause the contraction of the muscles of the left side and the relaxation of the right side so that I can maintain my posture and equilibrium and take the turn smooth. Okay? So it predicts the adjustments to be made to prevent the fall. Maintenance of posture through postural reflexes. And we have studied various postural reflexes. Vestibular apparatus plays an important role in various postural reflexes as the sensory organ. So first is vestibular placing reflex. Where was the integrating center of vestibular placing reflex? Cortex. 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 Exactly. In the cortex. cortex. It is a cortical postural reflex. The sensory is vestibular apparatus. Writing reflex. Okay. All the writing reflexes. You remember all the writing reflexes? Where is the integrating center? 
midbrain. The sensory for it was vestibular okay. apparatus. We had narrated the cat falling down. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the sensory organ there is vestibular apparatus. Next is vestibulo ocular reflex. Okay. Now suppose you are trying to turn your head. When you are turning your head, what happens to the eyes? When your head is turning this side, your eye is turning to the opposite side. Yes or no? This is vestibular ocular reflex. Okay. We saw the tract which helps in the vestibular ocular reflex. The one which was giving the efferents to third, fourth and sixth radial nerve nuclei. Okay. So this is also a posterior reflex, vestibular otolith reflex. Okay, to maintain the posture. Is it clear? Okay, so when functions of vestibular apparatus is asked, you have to enumerate all of this. Okay. Vestibular function test, there are two vestibular function tests. One is Barony's chair. Okay, and next is caloric stimulation. Barony's chair, it appears like this. Okay, in this the patient is made to sit. And the chair is revolved at a rate of 30 turns in 20 seconds. Okay? With the head in 30 degrees downwards. Why? Right? Yes. To keep the lateral semicircular canal exactly horizontal. He is then, or the chair is rotated at 3 revolutions, the 30 revolutions in 20 seconds. And once you stop it, Okay. You will see for the movement of the eye whether he is having nystagmus. Okay. If there is nystagmus towards the side of rotation for the last 25 to 40 seconds that means it is normal. Normally what is nystagmus? Movement of the eyeball. When you are turning your head, your eye is also turning. right? But once you try to fix it here, it will be moving in the opposite direction. That is fast nystagmus and slow nystagmus stroke. Okay. Absent nystagmus means there is vestibular lesion. Okay. It is also used in aerospace physiology training as Veronese chair. Next is syringe test in which if you syringe the extra uh, external auditory meatus okay, with cold temperature water that is 30 degrees. Okay or you stimulate it with hot water or warm water which is at 42 degrees to 44 degrees then this temperature also causes the stimulation of the vestibular apparatus why because it is changing the specific gravity and then you will see the cow's effect what is the cow's effect when you syringe with cold water it will cause nystagmus in the opposite eye opposite stroke nystagmus okay when you put or syringe with warm water you will see same side nystagmus that is called as cow's effect okay so what are the questions that can be asked on this LAQ can come on structure connections and function of vestibular apparatus SAQ on the vestibular functions structure and mechanism of any of the receptors that are present in the semicircular canals or in the utricle and saccule, okay, and functions of the semicircular canal. Any doubts? No?